Hello, hello, beloved. Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for your support. Subscribing to the channel, supporting the channel, joining us in our message, getting out this message about the divine feminine. Uh, go get our book, Matriarch to Patriarch. You know, support. I'm getting ready to probably write another book because I'm finding so much information. And uh, it looks like this information is going to continue to be ignored, you know. Uh, but today, we're going to talk about both. We're going to talk about both. Because, see, last time we talked, Billy Carson was giving both credit to civilizations. It was a trip. This man was giving, giving credit. To those. We also explored the possibility that other beings invaded this planet. There was a divine feminine, a feminine uh energy planet re ruled by women. Okay? That was ruled by women. It's a matter of fact, you know, I, I because there's so many artifacts that were found that predates uh patriarch's rule you know it's undeniable that there were women here and then looking at our sister uh mama zogby uh her research into this we know that women were already here but I digress. I'm going to move on because I want to look, look at this thought and I don't want people to get tied up in what's going on in this metaphysical community with this thought because it's really concerning me. It's really feeling like religion again. And in my research, and that's exactly what I found, that this 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 uh, thought thing Well, started off as a religion because that's exactly what I found while doing my research on Thoth. I found uh, he has a female counterpart named Seshet. Seshet, they never bring her up because she is older than Thoth. And what is you know, I want you to watch these clips. And then I'm going to come in as usual. I'm going to come in and I'm going to narrate. And I'm going to break some things down for you. But I, I'm going to have a few clips I have on th Thought and, and uh, Session. I want you to look at. And, it's, and I want, you know, I want, you know, for women. Because... We, this is an era where it's time to step in our powerful, our power. And we have this eclipse that's coming up that a lot of changes and transformation is happening, especially where Pluto is sitting right now. This is our edge. This is our edge to get back uh, where we need to be and stop supporting this, this, you know, it, it's like jumping in one frying pan from the next one. I hear uh, him talk about those, beloved. You know, I want I want you to look at these clips and then uh, we're going to come back here and we're going to talk about a little bit more about those. And we're going to break down in my research what I found to be true and what I found to be interesting in this research. And again, I'm going to show you that it all started with the divine feminine and how these, whatever, XY chromosome is telling you without telling you who they are. It's very deceiving, uh, but that is the that is the environment they have created for themselves because they can't really look at who they really are. That's what we're dealing with today, beloved. We're dealing with a, uh, and it is you know uh, I like what um, uh, what's her name, Pr Priscilla, the Queen Maker. She said we are looking at human AI. 
That's what you're looking at. Are you looking at a form of human AI? Are all of them like that? No. But there is quite a many of them that's working out of that sort of energy. There's no authenticity. They are purely programmed. They have no control over their behaviors. Neither are they interested in it. Okay? You're going to get a lot of manipulation. A lot of them going to be teaching each other how to manipulate women. Okay, this is just how real it's getting. It's very important that you understand what you're dealing with. And then the more I look at Billy Carson, you know, I'm like, how can you not know? I know he knows because you know all this other stuff. So quite naturally, uh. I need to find that clip with him and this him and this other guy was talking about the lack of feminine energy here uh, on this planet. But you quite literally know what's happening here, you know, and then not talk about that at all, to not give that any discussion at all. It is a big red flag to me, women. It is a big red flag. So go, go. I'm gonna. Play these. I'm gonna put these clips here, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about uh, thoughts, because I found out a lot of helpful information. And when I looked at that information, it was some. It took me back. It took me back to uh, the book I wrote about Christ consciousness, where I cut, where I uncovered the true origins of the sun gods came from sun goddesses and you see how the ancestors work i wrote about this and you know i it was like wow i did i wrote about that uh that's how they be dealing with me they just it came back full circle because when i started looking at this thought thing i was like i wrote about this i know i wrote about this uh i was like where did i write about i was like in my book so i had to go dig out my uh the book i wrote and this was years ago when i wrote this book See, when I first awakened and so, well, awakened the ancestors was dealing with me in such a mighty way, uh, a lot of information, a lot of downloads was coming to me. And I, I was trying to write these books to show uh, the Divine Mother in everything, the origin of her, where she came from. I don't know how it, it is for other people when they work up, but she was pulling me uh, back to her origin when I wanted to know who my ancestors were, where I came from, and really did a, did a deep dive, That's this is where my spirit was taking me. And so I saw where uh, the goddess was uh, the most popular spiritual practice in the ancient world. So this thought thing, there is no mention of him in the ancient world. There is no mention of Thoth until you know, later on. I found that interesting in my research too. But I want you to go ahead and look at uh, She Shack. Look at these uh, little small clips. And then we're going to dive in more uh, of who Thoth is because I want to dismantle uh, the hype and the propaganda with this, you know, beloved. That is not our stories, beloved. This this is them, these outside, whoever they are, writing themselves into our history, our heritage. Okay? So let's watch this and then we'll come back. Culture of North African Kemetic and later Egyptian civilizations. Seshet was seen as the goddess of wisdom, knowledge, and writing, and was considered to be the scribe of the gods. She is credited with the invention of both writing and of the alphabet. And she was known as the goddess who measured and recorded the world. As the lady of builders, she was the matron of architecture, astronomy, and mathematics, known as she who was foremost in the library. Seshet is usually depicted wearing a panther skin as a symbol of priestly office. She often carries a palm fraud carved with notches to mark the passing of years. As goddess of writing, 
Seshet was the keeper of royal annals and geologies, and she was shown in artwork recording the booty from kings after battle, perhaps as a reminder that a share was due to the gods. Seshet was said to even descend into the underworld to record everything that happens in the realm of the dead. From her earliest mention in the second dynasty, she was shown assisting kings to lay out the foundations for temples and align them with the stars and the planets. And in the divine realm, Seshet was in charge of building and the construction of mansions of the other Netras or gods. She was sometimes assisted in these tasks by the gods of sight and hearing. Seshet also built mansions in the west for the fortunate dead. She was occasionally identified as an aspect of the god of Nephthys. In the coffin text, Seshet is said to be angry at a child that she gives birth to, just as later traditions would identify Nephthys rejecting her son Anubis. And other coffin texts, Thoth and Seshet bring writing to a man in the realm of the dead, and these writings were spells that could help the dead person to vanquish terrors of the underworld and to become a more powerful spirit. She is also the sister of the lion-headed goddess Bast, and in later mythology she is said to be the scribe of He's, uh, according to himself, he calls himself an Atlantean king. Now, the priests that were left behind after he left, they call him an Atlantean priest king. The ancient Egyptians, uh, you know, call him a king or a god. He ruled over them for 16,000 years. We're talking about a very, very long time ago. We're talking about 54,000 BC. This is ancient, pre-dynastic era, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, this gentleman claims to have built the Great Pyramid, but what's interesting is he his emerald tablets, which are a text that he authored himself. He didn't have a scribe that authored these texts. He wrote these tablets himself and left them behind for this generation that we are in right now to understand, break down, analyze, and actually learn from. What was interesting in these tablets is he talks about this flood in the opening uh, verses, this great flood that has swept across the land. Again, more evidence of a great flood. He talks about the fact that the temples were coming up out of the mud and that his mission now was to go and raise mankind back up to a high level of civilization. In other words, we had already been in a high level prior to this flood, potentially some type of a golden age, high level, high tech civilization existed before this flood destroyed the planet. And now him and his crew, he took a crew with him. He got into the great ship of the master, according to his writings. And this wasn't a ship that sailed out on the ocean because he said, upward we rose into the sky, to the sun, until beneath us, the planet, it basically disappeared, the earth disappeared. But we're talking about a ship that flies up and out, not that sails across water. Until the time appointed, he said, he looks down beneath the ship, lay the land of the children of Kem, and he sees an ancient temple coming up out of the mud, and then they descend down to the ground. And then the people by this time, had become barbarians. And so they had lost their technology, had lost you know, a lot of their language and everything else because of this global disaster that happened. Probably a couple generations have gone by or whatever, I'm assuming. But they come to attack him when he opens the door to his ship and come out, him and his crew. And he, he raises his staff and he sends out a ray of vibration which stops them still as fragments of stone of a mountain. So he has a stun gun that can freeze you in place just like we have the active denial system in the military that sends a beam at a crowd of rioters and can freeze them in their tracks, make them feel like they're vomiting, make them feel like they're on fire, put words in their head, make them in, put them in pain, make them run away. Same technology he has. And then he releases them and he begins to talk about peace with them. And he says, I'm a son of Atlantis and I'm here to raise you back up to a high level of civilization. So this guy is interesting because after he created this new civilization here in the land of Kemet before it was known as Egypt, he then told his crew to go around the planet and duplicate what they had done there. So he's the master architect. His crew went around the world and re-kickstarted civilization in different regions of this planet, most likely along that 33rd degree parallel. Uh, and uh, it's just to me evidence that after a flood, we had some assistance in getting back on our feet. So Thoth, he's uh, according to himself, he called... Before he left Egypt, he is supposed to have built the Great Pyramid at Giza, which was mistakenly believed to be built by Cheops. 
and to have placed guards chosen from the elite of his people to guard the entrance to the great halls of Amenti. There he hid his knowledge. The successors of these guardians later became the Pyramid Priests, who revered Tote as the god of wisdom. Legend has it that in later centuries, Tote entered the bodies of various people in a manner described in the tablets. In his last incarnation, he was known as Hermes Trismegistus, the Threeborn. According to legend, Tote wrote down his knowledge of alchemy, the creation of the universe, the nature of the soul, immortality, magic, and spiritual wisdom on tablets that Hermes, the Greek god of alchemy and hermeticism, later discovered. The writings are kept in the Great Pyramid, the last two being of great importance and containing secrets that are invaluable to the serious student. In the 1300s BC, chaos reigned in Egypt, also known as ancient Ham, which is why delegations of priests are sent to other parts of the world. Among them were those of the ancient pyramid who carried the tablets with them as a talisman by which they could exercise power over the less skilled priestly races, the descendants of the other Atlantean colonies. According to legend, the tablets give the bearer the power of tote. Some of the priests discovered the flourishing Mayan race in South America who had preserved much of the ancient wisdom, so they settled among them. After the Mayans were conquered Okay. So we saw those clips, everyone. Uh, I'm going to go into one. This one here about Shishat. The visual is different, but the wording is the same. I hope you're following me on this one. Uh, and I'm going to dive into Shishat. And what's in in interesting to me is that she seems to be biologically from here. She's not coming from anywhere else. And it seems that Thoth is just written in. And it's interesting to me, she has a very big part in communication, uh, uh, intellect, but yet she's not given, given the credit that, that, sh that she deserves. It, Thoth is given all this. And it's interesting because she's done so much. Let me just show you the clip. Can't wait to dive in here. So let's just see. And civilizations, Seshet was seen as the goddess of wisdom, knowledge, and writing, and was considered to be the scribe of the gods. She is credited with the invention of both writing and of the alphabet. She invented writing and the alphabet. Again, she invented writing and the alphabet. So why is this Thoth being given so much so many accolades when he wouldn't be able to write or do anything without session she was the inventor you see how these men shift things you see how things are shifting now you won't know anything about c shed because when he thought talk about those they never mentioned c shed they make it seem like he is on his own but really thoughts learn everything from c -Shack. And if we go back and look at Thoth, remember Thoth came in with the invaders. This These matriarchs were already here. See, they had all this stuff already set up. You have these outer invaders coming in learning. Again, learning from this higher civilization that they uh, really, they have sent us back. They are the manipulators of time. They are the manipulators of time. But they have set us back when we're supposed to be uh, way more involved than what they say. We're supposed to be way more involved when you look at the technology. They have stolen technology and then repackaged it to us. But we, all had, we had a lot of this technology. And the Ark of the Covenant that was there in Egypt came from it. That was that was that was uh that's where our power came from. It was boundless. That was the power of this planet that was in the Ark of Covenant. All these other power centers that you see in nature. But let's go on. She was known as the goddess who measured and recorded the world. 
as the Lady of Builders, she was the matron of architecture, astronomy, and mathematics, known as she who was foremost in the library. Sachet is usually depicted wearing a panther skin as a symbol of priestly office. She often carries a palm fraud carved with notches to mark the passing of years. As goddess of writing, Sachet was the keeper of royal annals and geologies, and she was shown in artwork recording the booty from kings after battle. Perhaps now, notice they're saying she was depicted in, in artwork. That's because they learned everything from her. Okay? They could not, uh, the Masons could not do what they did without studying everything that she wrote because she mapped everything out according to the stars. Remember, she invented writing. She was the master of astrology, astronomy, and mathematics. So these kings had to study. Uh, they like to say, too, that she didn't have a, uh, she didn't have a temple. Yet you seen her pictures there. She had a temple, but they sunk it. They sunk it. She had a temple. That's that's what they did to a lot of the matriarch temples that were there when the patriarchs took over. They sunk a lot of those temples and built over a lot of those temples. That's something that they tried to gender wash as well. So not only do we have to watch out again for whitewashing, we have to watch out for gender washing. And this is the, 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 you know, it's a shame that we have to do it, but we have to do it, you know, especially with this thought thing. If a man is talking about humanity, he ain't talked about no woman. He is lying. He is lying. We cannot trust these men. They have had enough time to show their morality and evolution. But they have not shown it, beloved. They still have work to do. Okay, uh, let's move on. As a reminder that a share was due to the gods. Seshat was said to even descend into the underworld to record everything that happens in the realm of the dead. From her earliest mention in the second dynasty, she was shown assisting kings to lay out the foundations for temples and align them with the stars and the planets. And in the divine realm, Seshit was... See, this is why I keep saying they learned everything from their mama. Remember I told you the Masons and, and, and the Moors, they learned everything from their mother. This is where they learned it from. They came here and invaded. And now she's in the backdrop now. Uh, and they're getting accolades for all this through masonry and all this other stuff that they have, these other secret societies that they have created. But the big smoking gun and the big secret that you stole all of this from women of color. You stole all of this because they were galactic beings. They were, we were going out to other uh, places. And we didn't mind helping them. But then they tried, they took over our power source. Okay. This is the real story, beloved. This is the real story. In charge of building and the construction of mansions of the other netters or gods. She was sometimes assisted in these tasks by the gods of sight and hearing. Sasha also built mansions in the West. See, she had the divine she connection. She was occasionally identified as an aspect of goddess Nephthys. In the coffin text, Sasha is said to be angry at a child that she gives birth to. Just Isn't that something? She's angry at a child that she give birth to. Even that is um, allegorical in that. A child that she gives birth to because she gave birth to this XY chromosome. This half beast, whatever he was. She she made sure that, that he lived. And then look at him now. Look at him now. As later traditions were identify Nephthys rejecting her son Anubis and other coffin texts Thoth and Seshit bring writing to a man in the realm of the dead and these writings were spells that could help the dead person to vanquish terrors of the underworld and to become a more powerful spirit she is also the sister of the lion-headed goddess Bast 
and in later mythology, she is said to be the scribe of. Okay. So we're going to move on. We're going to talk about, uh, she shared a little bit more. We're going to talk about Thoth a little bit more. I want you to look into the research uh, that I have done. But right now we're going to talk about she shared and the research that I saw on her that was very, very interesting. Uh, so let's move on. Okay, here we go. We're going to talk about C-Shed again. Seshit. You know, her name is spelled different, so you may hear me pronounce it different. Uh, she was the Egyptian goddess of writing, wisdom, and knowledge, the daughter of Thoth. So you see here, they go right off. Again, this is what reminds me so much of how they wrote their way into the Bible, the Abrahamic religion. So you see these out be these outside beings writing themselves saying, hey, she was the daughter of Thoth. She was seen as a scribe and record keeper. Her name means female scribe. So her her name means female scribe. They're not, they don't say that about Thoth. And it's going to be very interesting. When we talk about Thoth, it's going to be very interesting to find out where he really come from. She was seen as the scribe, the record, uh, record keeper. Her name means scribe. She is credited with inventing writing, just like we said. She became identified, identified as the goddess of sciences, accountants, architecture, astronomy, astrology, and mathematics and surveying. You see it right here for yourself. Okay, they're letting you know she was the originator. And it's something to see her in this right here. Because again, this ties her back to the West as well. Her being in this uh, this leopard or jaguar print. Again. Okay. See that? Seashed is attested to the second dynasty where she assisted King Kaskimi with the stretching of the cord. And that's something. Because when we see these kings come into play, we see this Thoth come into play. Okay, we see this Thoth come into play. Let's let's see who, who he was. He was the last pharaoh of the second dynasty of Egypt. Little is known about him other than he led several significant military campaigns, built the mold brick for it known as Shunet el Zebit. So nothing, no, they really don't know anything about him. Again, this is, a, a, this I, I believe, that a lot of this points back to an invasion. This is a soft way of saying it. As the divine measure uh, inscribed, Seashat was believed to appear to assist the Pharaoh in both the, these practices. She assisted the Pharaoh in stretching the cord ritual, the ritual related to laying out the foundation of temples, other important structures in order to determine uh, the sacred alignments and precisions of the dimensions. She was also the mistress builders and laid the plans for constructions and expansion and sacred sites such as temples. Her skills were necessary for surveying the land to reestablish boundary lines and annual floods. The priestess who officiated these functions in her name also oversaw the staff of others performed similar duties were trained in mathematics and related store related the related store of knowledge so like i tell you these patriarchs learned everything from these women okay they're letting you know uh, these women they had a priestess you see in there they had other priestess in here who knew about this knowledge. They knew about mathematics. They knew about how to map things out to the stars. These women knew about this. And who comes in and who they're teaching how to do this? The kings. They are the invaders. 
but they're doing it in a soft way of letting you know that oh they're not invaders yes you are invaders because you don't even know anything about this planet our ancient mothers had to teach you she also was responsible for recording the speeches the pharaoh made during the crowning ceremony and approving the inventory of foreign captives and goods gained in military uh, campaigns during the new kingdom she was involved in the said festival held by the pharaohs who celebrate 30 years of reign recording the regional years of the king his jubilees on leaves on the isht or per se tree it was she who recorded by noticing her palm the time allotted to the pharaoh for his stay on earth okay everything came from these women whether they want to admit it or not you're seeing it here for yourself i can go on and on with this but do your own research it's right here in our face this was sea shack this is before thoth this is before thoth this is this is what's what's before thoth okay so we're gonna go down we're gonna uh break down uh thoth here in a minute so let's go on and let's let's just look at thoth and let's see what uh you know let's break down where he comes from and what he contributes to humanity okay i'm gonna play this clip for you and i'm gonna narrate this i've let you watch it all the way through where he tells his story as best I can uh, with what I could capture uh, off this video for you. Then I'm going to break down what the biggest thing here, because again, this is the patriarch story. This is not the story of the matriarchs. See, they, they're telling you how they came in, invaded, and took over and took our source. You see how he just came, he comes in there, and he just swoops in there and tells his story. Listen to what he says here is those who came from heaven to earth. Prior to the flood, they put the Ijiji. The Ijiji, according to these tablets, were the working class people. They worked and mined the land and create structures and cities and everything else, but they worked for 200,000 years and they got tired of working according to the tablets. Now this is the story of the patriarchs. These are the, this is the story of the patriarchs in Sumer that he's telling you here. He's telling you about the patriarchs in Sumer. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's move on. They were so pissed off, they were so angry, the conditions were harsh, they felt like they were being converted into slaves. And so they had a coup, and they decided to go against the kings of Earth. After the flood, they decided to utilize this new, tinker, genetically modified version of a Homo sapien sapien. They started this project of capturing hominids and tinkering with their DNA. And they started off with this cloning system at first. So Isis says, I have an idea. She says, I'm going to take an egg from one of the women. And they took the egg and she cleaned out some of the genetic material or whatever they did. They made a zygote. They added some of their essence to the egg. They say essence. I think that's genetic modification in my understanding. They took this zygote, which is what you call a modern science. They put it in her womb. She took it the term 10 months, not nine, 10 months. And then you see her in this famous cylinder scroll holding up this baby saying, my hands have created it. She gave birth to the Adamu, which means first man and they so they put adam in this eden edi she gave birth to the adamu which means first man and they so they put adam in this so you eden, see right eden, here and the guy who ruled over eden was satan the lord of eden she gives the birth tablets. to the first man see how that he skips over this he skips over Bible this like this doesn't Yahweh mean anything god that guy's just he skips over this guys. like this doesn't god. mean anything but and this means a lot eden here was this laboratory where they would have these mating the rituals between the different peoples and they got when they got adam in there they tried to mate him with these other ones 
wasn't working out. So they said, okay, let's see how they came in. These people invaded. Like I said, these men were created to have sex with us, the angels. We are the angels. genetically modified us by taking chromosome number They are not the angels. They 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 put themselves up like that, but we are in the angels. Did you see the story? That when you they first come in here. They say we don't know how this happened. It's an artificial mutation that would have taken millions of years to happen, but it happened about two hundred thousand years ago. So the tablets line up with modern science once again. And so it's the foundation of a high level civilization. When we got to one of the highest advanced civilizations, which started out in Sumer and then migrated over into the land of Kemet before it became Egypt, the initial pharaohs would be a direct bloodline of one of these Anunnaki people. When they relocated home base to the land of Kemet, See how they took over now. They took over that. They're just, this is the story how the patriarchs came in and took over. Create these mystery schools at this dawn of this new era 36,000 years ago. The gentleman who started this, his name was Thoth, T H O T H, and he's known as a wisdom keeper. He's known all over the entire world, but he ruled over the land of Kemet for 14 or 16,000 years, roughly thereabout, according to the ancient Egyptians. And then he left there and went to Mesoamerica and kickstarted the team. Now, this is a lie. In Mexico City. See how they have built on top of this again. Now, this is why I say Khan me and no. Name, they know he skipped and all over the matriarchs here Mexico really means that is responsible for Mexico this inferior species here here man he skipped all, all over that that's why i said this is the smoking gun father Akhenaten, he got in big trouble because when you go to egypt if you, if you ever notice all those chipped away gods that was under the order initially who started that Akhenaten. so Akhenaten decided i'm going to become a monotheistic ruler and not the kind of believes in multiple gods and then what got into him was amin ra who's also Thoth's brother he's the one who said whenever you give thanks you say amen to me you give thanks to me this is why people say amen they're not saying amen to the creator of the again universe. this is they're the story of the patriarchs the how they set things up ruler. there'll be no other god but me i'm a jealous god that made it into the biblical text why would the creator of the universe be jealous this was Amon Ra talking, and you can look him up on the Jewish American Library and all that stuff. His name is all over the place. He's all in there interacting and talking and creating all kinds of issues and problems. And he told Akhenaten that you worship me and you get everyone to worship me and deface all the other gods. So Akhenaten started ordering and decreeing that all these things be chipped away everywhere you go. Chip away the faces, chip away the ears. That's why he was kicked out of Egypt. He went to the Great Pyramid. And he went to that stone box area inside the king's chamber and took See, he was kicked out of Egypt. You see what I'm saying? Moses. And That's they, the when Moses them people story. left, the people that they left with Exodus. some of the matriarch's power. The see that power from, source there? But there was more power sources there. He's talking about this Ark of the Covenant. All these people out of Egypt with the Ark of the Covenant. And that's why the powers that be sent an army. And that's like why we went after them you. saying, hey, so you're taking our power. In the desert with the Ark of the Covenant, which is See, well he's, ta he's telling a half truth here. And this is how the patriarchs do it. He's telling a half truth here. And he's totally forgotten about the matriarch culture. You know what it says? What it was capable of doing is a weapon. But it also has the capability of being a power source. So it does multiple See things. what I'm saying? They, they kill these heads. That's why I say it's. it's kind of boots on because of what I don't passion. see how they don't know. And some scientists that said. I don't see how they don't know. He skipped over that whole matrix the because they invaded this planet. No it's female. It is. So uh, we are the original galactic Ethiopia. beings. Women are the original galactic beings of the planet Earth. The rest are probably in some type of a military bunker. The Great Pyramid itself is a power generator. That's the smoking gun, beloved. Okay, so now we're going to jump in this part of the video, which is very intriguing to me because the ancestor has to uh, had revealed it to me. This was a sort of, uh, you know, thoughts. When I was thinking of a thought, I was like, is thought some type of consciousness? Was this some type of consciousness that came down over men, you know, as well, that he was sharing his consciousness with, with men? You know, that's that's the only thing I could think, especially when I seen patriarchy, the way it all of a sudden happened all over the planet. 
it all of a sudden happened all over the planet. That's why I say, and then thoughts is always referred to as AKA thought. It's something else. So letting you know there is something going on within their mind. That's why I say they, they, they have some type of AI uh unification thing going on I, I, I you know when you see the, the what you call the, the mr smiths in the matrix you know it kind of remind you that with men it's like a different man you see a different face but it, it's the same thing going on on the inside of them so uh and this right here really really you know really was something when I was listening to this. So let's let's dive in and see this. I thought this was very interesting, you people. I mean, but, beloved, let's let's pay attention to what's going on, people. Before he left Egypt, he is supposed to have built the Great Pyramid at Giza, which was mistakenly believed to be built by Cheops, and to have placed guards chosen from the elite of his people to guard the entrance to the Great Halls of Amenti. There he hid his knowledge. The successors of these guardians later became the pyramid priests who revered Tot as the god of wisdom. Legend has it that in later centuries, Tot entered the bodies of various people in a manner described in the tablets. In his last incarnation, he was known as Hermes Trismegistus, the Threeborn. According to legend, Tot wrote down his knowledge of alchemy, the creation of the universe, the nature of the soul, immortality, magic, and spiritual wisdom on tablets that Hermes, the Greek god of health. Now you see he has absolutely nothing on Shishat. Again, this is again and, and again, this is a Greek philosophy. This is a Greek uh, creation of thoughts. He's not even originally uh, uh, from Kemet. You understand what I'm saying? The way they said wisdom on the tablets of Hermes. Again, this is a Greek, uh, you know, a Greek culture that is possessed by this sort of thought, philosophy of thoughts. You understand what I'm saying? Listen to what's going on here. They seem to get possessed by this sort of philosophy or thinking. Alchemy and Hermeticism later discovered. The writings are kept in the Great Pyramid, the last two being of great importance and containing secrets that are invaluable to the serious student. In the 1300s BC, chaos reigned in Egypt, also known as Ancient Ham, which is why delegations of priests are sent to other parts of the world. Among them were those of the Ancient Pyramid, who carried the tablets with them as a talisman by which they could exercise power over the less skilled priestly races. Now that sound now this sounds just like religion to me. This sounds just like religion. The emerald tablets, what he, he said, so they can have more power over the more unskilled people. You see what I'm saying? These emerald tablets. That's what I said. Watch this. Um watch this sens uh, uh, sensualization of thoughts watch that on the metaphysical scene because something that definitely is not right again there's some deception going on and half truth that's going on about this being and who he is i mean again again it just seems like the same abrahamic thing that we had going on in this bible now we see going on in metaphysics according to legend the tablets give the bearer the power of tote some of the priests discovered the flourishing Mayan race in South America who had preserved much of the ancient wisdom, so they settled among them. After the Mayans were conquered. Okay, so we saw that. Uh, you heard what they said. I gave my my narrating uh, insight on it. Let's go on and let's look at what the research says on those. You know, you heard me talk here and I gave my input here, but let's get a little bit more proof. Okay, so now we're going to jump into Thoth, who he is and where he originated. 
so they can get us every time because some of us fail to do the necessary um, work to look at things okay so must you know we won't do it we just listen and we'll just follow through and when we're following these men you know i can't and it's usually these men that blow up to be the most ignorant the most abusive men you know you can ever come in contact with that women and children and other men will follow you know they would just blindly follow, you know, but when a woman is sitting here telling the truth and telling y'all the truth and stuff, you know, we got to manipulate in y'all into telling the truth. But here is a man here, he manipulate you with these lies. You don't do any research and you blindly follow him. You know, I can't, oh my gosh, let me just, uh, excuse me, let me just dive in here. Let's look at Thoth, because Thoth is borrowed from the Coptic. What does Coptic mean? It's a group closely related to the Egyptian dialect, but they're not. Represented the most recent developments of Egyptian language and historically spoken by Copts. Copts. Starting from the 3rd century AD in Roman Egypt, Coptic was supplanted by the Arabic and primary spoken language. Okay, so this, this one even Egyptian. Thoth is not a, even a Egyptian. He's not even Kemetic. You understand what I'm saying? This is, a, this is a, again... This is why they said he is described, his name means he is like Ibis. He is like an animal. He is like Ibis. They're describing him close to an animal. You see him, you know, you'll see him uh, depicted as a man with the head of an Ibis or a baboon. You're not going to see him in a human form again because I believe this goes back to the XY chromosome. Uh, the invasion of these people, that's why you see them like this, these beings. That's why you see them half human because they came here, to, uh, uh, our set, Isis, our mother, ancient mother helped them to replicate themselves. And this is how she depicted them. His feminine counterpart was Shishat. And his wife was Mayat. You see, they have themselves marrying themselves into these women. Again, this was an invasion of this species that's coming in here. They're writing themselves. This is nothing different than I see the Abrahamic religion writing themselves when they wrote this Bible, writing themselves into matriarch history. This is the same thing I see here. He was the God of moon, wisdom, knowledge, writing, and hieroglyphics science magic art and judgment why because he never invented any of this so why who who was you know why because he never invented and he wasn't from this planet so he couldn't be the god of the moon because he didn't have the 28 day cycle so why thought chief temple was located in the city of hermopolis ancient egyptian Egyptological Kemnu Coptic. Again, this is taken over. This is taken over by the Coptic, later known as Ashumin. I might pronounce this wrong in uh, Egyptian Arabic. So you see the where Thoth is coming from. Before the beginning of the Christian era, it is very large. Pronois was still standing in 1826 was demolished and used to fill the foundation of the sugar factory by the mid 19 uh 19th century thoth played many vital prominent roles in egyptian mythology okay such as maintaining the universe being one with two deities the other may I, because she is the first. He is writing himself. They are coming in at the end of ancient history 
and they have reset time. When you look at the Anunnaki and you look at them, these are manipulators of time. And that's what you're seeing here. They're injecting themselves here because may I or said all of them was there before they even came. They the one teaching them the spiritual systems, how to stay in harmony with this planet, who stood on the either side of Ra's solar barku. In the later history in ancient Egypt, Thoth became heavily associated with the obturation of godly disputes the arts of magic the system of writing and the judgment of the dead okay so you see that here you'll see be hearing him called to hootie the hootie as well but we also see this energy or this thought take over men there's something happened with these invaders they were able it's it kind of you know it's, it's really strange when you start to look at these things very uh, uh very closely but it's almost like some type of consciousness came in over me okay so I, I i i you know i recommend you do your own research but do know that this thought this thought learned everything from the ancient matrix our culture that it was already here okay beloved i hope this helped you because again he is not being described as a scribe his name means ibis you see what i'm saying his man he is like the ibis he is, a, 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 and I think the ancient mothers were so clever not to give, uh, clever to do this because we know that he wasn't originally from this planet. That, that the ancient mother said he is like an animal. He is like an animal, half human, and they depicted him that way. You know, again, I think our ancient mothers are very clever in depicting them that way. Uh, I think this is this had a lot to do with them since they were in charge of the arts and sciences, and they have him. You know, they know him as Jehudi, Jehudi, Tahudi, Tahudi, Zahudi. Again, uh, thought is similar to the pharaonic tilatary are also known, including ships, lords. You see what I'm saying? This is when. And something you go look at this this is when you see these men coming into play go do your own research on this but i'm looking at this beloved but uh i'm gonna wrap things up and give you my final thoughts on this you can do your own research but i thought it's very interesting just pointing out the simple things here Okay, loved ones, we covered a lot of information. I gave a lot of insight on this, and I, I wanted to come here and give my final thoughts so we can wrap it all up. And so uh, you can do some critical thinking of your own and do your own research. This is just a little tip of the iceberg, a soft research that I did on this that revealed quite a bit about both. You know, we saw the video where Bill Carson was giving thought credit for all civilization. We just know that wasn't true. Uh, and then we see, uh, we see he, he has this, uh, uh, thought has this relationship with c -Shat and Mayotte. And these are the most uh, influential beings in, in, in Mayotte and Kemet. You know, and we see the priests come in and study this and, you know, to study uh, these metaphysical concepts that these women has wrote. And so we see him both coming in, pairing himself with these women. That's, that's something else. He's writing himself in there and him not being described as a scribe himself. It's very clever that the ancestral mothers, the ancient mothers, describe him as an ibis. He is like an ibis. He, he is like an animal. You know, in so many ways, they were so uh, strategic in doing it, so clever in the way 
uh, they did that. And she's chat name mean scribe that's what she is so you could tell that she was the originator of everything you know uh was very interesting is when i got to thinking about thoth and all that and i was like oh my gosh i, I know i wrote about this i wrote about this in my book how they uh destroyed these ancient temples there were sun goddesses temples when the patriarchs took over I talked about that in my book, Christ Consciousness. And it's something how, you know, like I said, the ancestors brought it full circle. I had to dig out that book and say, oh, okay, this also, uh, it really tears down the deception that they have going on. When you look at my book, Christ Consciousness, again, you have thoughts creating this flood he, they sunk a lot of these temples during the flood. He's letting you know that too. He's letting you know that when he sunk it. He they sunk the, with that flood. They sunk a lot of the ancient uh, mother's temples, and then they rebuilt over them and put men in charge. You know, and 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 then he goes in. They didn't know anything about building temples. They didn't know anything about that. So they had to look at the writings of our ancient mothers. He liked to, they like to say that Session had no temple. Yes, she had a temple, but you sunk it. You learned everything that you could from her when it came to creating temples and, and science and maths and all of that. And then you created a flood and you left it here and you took all their technology from them and then reset it and gave it to man. man. Okay, because all this came from women. They're letting you know that. You know, they have let you know that. She was the ancient, Session was the ancient goddess of writing, wisdom, and knowledge. Okay, and then now she comes, began, she's either married to Thoth or she's the daughter of Thoth. And then he's, oh, now he's not, 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 not she's just his daughter, but now he's married to Maya Isis, all set too. So this this has a lot to do, uh, you know, if you go back and look at the story that Billy Carson is saying, they, this has a lot to do with these these beings being very desperate to replicate themselves and to learn how to evolve spiritually. And they were learning it from these women. Again, you know, he's giving you a soft version, version of the invasion of these beings. You know, but you saw it for yourself that she shed, you know, she was the goddess of science, accounting, architecture, astronomy, astrology, building, surveying. It all came from her. So why is Thoth giving so much, so much attention and accolades when everything he learned came from session? And this is what I say again, women, when a man is talking about humanity. And he is not mentioning a woman. You know he is lying, so we cannot believe anything that he is saying. And then I've showed you what those this 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 it, it's a Coptic type of philosophy. It's Greek. It's not even Egyptian. Okay, you have them coming in on the end of pre-dynasty, pre-dynastic history. Because I don't even think that, I, I don't think that women even call, you know, this dynasty, I don't think, even think they call it e Egyptian. This was something that man came in when these other civil, whatever they are, outside invaders came in, they became to name themselves. And I think that was very interesting to me is that thought that sometimes depicted as a bamboo. And men describe or justify their behavior through the study of chimpanzees and their social hierarchy. I thought that was very intriguing how I was able to put those together. You know, and now you see Thoth is pairing himself with these ancient mothers. You know, and then he's calling himself the god of the moon, but yet you don't have a 28-day cycle. So how can you be the god of the moon? You see, you have these men, you know, they're not thinking things through when they come in or try to take over. They're not thinking everything through when they come over and try to reset civilizations uh, and do what they're doing. 
But he's saying he's the king of, you know, he he's, he is in charge of the moon. And how is that? How is that? Because you don't have a 28-day cycle. You don't give birth to a soul or humanity. So how is that? See, they're telling you without telling you who they are, beloved. And and, and uh, when a man, like I say, I can't, I can't emphasize this enough. When a man is telling you a story of humanity and there's not a woman in there, you know he is definitely lying. And this, this seems to be a trend of men. They will beat their chest and talk about themselves, but they won't talk about where they originated from or where they came from. Okay? And then it tells you, you know, that she shat, she was the inventor of writing and thought taught writing to men. See, that's what his 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 job was was to teach man. Thought is you see these these when you see these characters come in, they, this is strategically talking to men. They are talking to men, they are not addressing women. This is men spiritual evolution that we have going on here. See, he taught that to man. They are telling you without telling you, beloved. Just like in the Bible, we see the Abrahamic men pair up with the ancient prophetess. It looks the very same thing here with the Egyptian matriarchs. The patriarchs outside beings wrote themselves into an, an ancient feminine spiritual practice. That's what I see here, beloved. You know, and then when I look at these emerald tablets, you know, it was revered by the is uh uh by the Islamic patriarchs and the European patriarchs. You know, again, I think the Emerald Tablets was a soft uh writing of the Bible for the patriarchs. It was a soft, again because those came here to men, and I and I, I showed you where these men seem like to be under this possession with this type of thought that came out of nowhere when they began to read these tablets. That is their ancestor. That that belongs to them, and and it looks to me like the Emerald Tablets could be a soft version of this Bible. Like you know, maybe it was a uh, a manuscript before this Bible even came out i thought that was very uh, in, uh interesting to me is when i got to looking at this i i, I couldn't stop thinking about my book uh, christ consciousness you know i could not stop thinking about the book christ consciousness because in that book it revealed that these sun goddesses that these temples these women had were uh built over by the patriarchs i think that's the most important thing to take away from here and uh thought is a representation of the xy chromosome that they created that's what that is and i think that you know as, as you know that's just my insight on it i'm seeing it being uh really pushed and you know uh, marketed into the metaphysical community that's really talking about thoth. But you can't talk about thoth if you're not going to talk about uh, Seshet, if you're not going to talk about Isis or Set. He he don't even exist. He, he, he doesn't even exist. He wouldn't even be where he's at had he not learned anything from these ancient mothers. And even the fact when you even look at Sirius, the star Sirius, a lot of people like to contribute Osiris to Sirius when really that is the, uh, you know, that is the star of Isis, the evening star that belongs to her, not Osiris. So a lot of these things have been flipped, beloved. I've came here and I've showed you where this character thought, you know, I'm not rocking with it. Because you've already heard how Thoth was described and who he was rolling with. Okay? So I hope this video was helpful. I hope it brought some insight to you. You know, thank you for being here with me today. Light, love, namaste, ashe, love one.